So now that we've got all of that Macross out of the way, time to get back to something I'm a little more familiar with. A good old-fashioned Gundam. Uh, this is the version 2.0 of uh, Ma uh, Bandai's Master Grade uh, ZGMF uh, X10A Freedom, also known as the Freedom Gundam, though referred to as a Gundam only a couple of times and only by one character, uh, because in that particular universe, um, the term Gundam isn't really a word that exists. Uh, it was div uh, it was invented by the pilot of the strike, uh, Kira Yamato, because the operating system, generation, unsubdued, nuclear, something, 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 um, had a, the acronym spelled Gundam. And every subsequent Gundam type or mobile suit that looked like it would be call called a Gundam in any other series had increasingly more ridiculous kludged-together acronyms that spelled the word Gundam. Um, they just got even more silly as the series went on, and especially into the sequel series Gundam Seed Destiny, which I'm gonna try not to speak of, aside from to say that it's the show that got me to stop watching anime for a really long time. Because it's not good, and I don't like it. As much as I liked Gundam Seed, I do not like Seed Destiny. Um, but it had cool mecha design. Uh, but this one is not from Seed Destiny. Well, it features in the first half of Seed Destiny in a handful of episodes. Uh, and then is ultimately uh, destroyed by Shin Asuka in his uh, Impulse mobile suit, I think. Um... Somewhere around the middle of the series, he uses very creative means to attack the Freedom, um, employing the modular construction of the uh, the Impulse to his benefit. Uh, it, like the original RX-78, it uses a core block system so it could divide at the waist, but the upper body could transform into a flyer, and the lower body could transform into a flyer, and the core fighter could also transform into a flyer, so it could separate into multiple modules, and as modules got damaged, they would send out new pieces. Every time he got an arm cut off, he would just send out a new torso module. Piece of cake. And he would swap modules on the fly, and eventually was able to wear down Kira in the Freedom and, uh, and kill it. In probably the only really awesome moment in the entire series. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, that show was garbage. But... Um, yeah, the, uh, the death of the Freedom was very tragic, because it's one of my favorite mobile suits of all time, and I'm still salty at Bandai for them never having done a perfect grade of it. They did the Strike Freedom, its successor. They did the Strike and the Strike Rouge, even though one, the Rouge is a recolor of the Strike, so it's a natural and they would do both, because it's an easy way to recoup a little cost. But the fact that they never did a perfect grade Strike, I am super mad at uh, Bandai for that. But, they did a version 2 Master Grade, so we are going to take a look at that, because even, what, when did this series come out? I think it was 2003 it premiered, so, yeah, this is still one of my favorite mecha designs of the last 15 years. Um, so let's take a peek. I'm not going to dwell for too long on the box art. Um, it's a pretty standard Master Grade box, you know, digital rendering of the mobile suit in action uh, somewhere fighting over Earth. Uh, box left side has some photos of the completed model, shows off some of the articulation details and whatnot. And the other side just has some uh, bio info and uh, just some three figure views of the uh, completed model. As is pretty common, first runner we get is uh, the, the uh, system injected runner. So we got our uh, white, red, yellow, and clear parts. Um, mostly uh, rear and front and side skirts. The central V crest, which looks awful big. Um, looks a lot bigger than, uh, than it was on the version 1. So that's, that's interesting. The uh, secondary 
uh, yellow vertical crest, which is made of kind of a more flexible plastic. You've got your pilot figure, uh, Kira in his uh, duty uniform and his pilot's jumpsuit. Uh, head, armor parts, uh, both left and right halves, and the uh, rear piece. So this suggests that the head is actually on a uh, internal frame. Uh, you got your clear parts, uh, eyes, uh, camera for the blaster, and uh, forehead crest sensors. Um, I think these are some of the red insert detail parts for the over-the-shoulder cannons, in detail parts for the shield here and here. Uh, I would guess vents for the hip rail cannons and the rail cannon barrels, uh, shoulder vents, part of the cockpit, the uh, red chin, and uh, the little bit of red trim under the eyes, uh, more of the crest and part of the uh, waist armor. I have to confess to being a little disappointed in the display stand they opted to go with. Uh, this was originally issued in 2004. Um, I remember seeing it with, I believe it was the Wing Zero Custom uh, Master Grade kit way back in 2004, and I was never a fan of this this stand. Um, it is our, it is jointed, so you know you've got two different positions for uh, for the rod, but I would have preferred if they had included the same or a similar base as what came with the version 1 of Freedom, which the actual base was very evocative of its wings. It was a very elegant, very graceful base. Um, however, it was not articulated and uh, didn't offer much in the way of uh, flight, in-flight posing options. You couldn't lean the mobile suit forward. Um, but I would imagine this is still compatible with Bandai's action base. So... This is only if you don't have an action base, you can use you can use this. Uh, mechanical detail parts: you got your waist, uh, uh, rear skirt armor parts. Uh, looks like part of the torso, uh, part of the uh, abdomen, probably piece of the backpack, collar, um, skirt armors, uh, the mainframe for the gun. I would say. Shield mount latch parts. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is the attachment point for an action base. So this would just plug into the, the top of an action base um, and uh, plug into the mobile suit the same way as the base that comes with it does. Uh, part of the head frame, I would say this would be the uh, insert piece for the uh, hips. So the uh, hip plugs would pl uh, fit into there. Um, joints, I would guess, for the wings. Uh, the neck, hand pieces, so much like a lot of Master Grade par uh, kits lately, instead of having articulated hands, it simply has swap out fingers, which not a fan of, but, you know, hey, it's, uh, it's a way to get improved detail and uh, a stronger grip on, um, on weapons and accessories than uh, articulated hands can often do. Got a couple of identical runners here, so we'll just uh, look at one. Over-the-shoulder cannons, uh, shoulder armor parts, not sure. Um, more over-the-shoulder cannon parts. This would fit, I think, over the, uh, the red frame piece we looked at. These would be part of the joints for it. Uh, forearm parts, upper arm parts, probably shoulder, guessing part of the ankle. Um, yeah, more leg parts, I would say. This is probably a, a, a hatch that opens up to reveal a thruster someplace underneath it. The shield. It looks a little more angular and dynamic than the, uh, than the version 1.0 did. It had more of a rectangular slotted uh, window as opposed to this uh, kind of... It kind of reminds me of a Cylon eye. Um... Overall, I like this design. It's, it's really neat. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed. The, uh, the version 1, this little panel here, uh, which I believe is this, this hole is to allow the beam rifle to poke through. The pilot can peer through the, uh, the slot here and hold the rifle through there. This piece was actually swappable. It could uh, 
go on either side of the shield. You could pull it off and just clip it on on either side. So I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't uh, do that again on this version, but eh, whatever. Um, this is the top armor plate for the uh, beam rifle, which looks like uh, the blue trim between the top plate and the rifle body, uh, it looks like the blue trim is actually a separate piece, which that was one of my big complaints about the previous one, is that uh, it was just a single white piece of plastic and you had to either apply a, uh, a sticker or paint it. So this looks a lot better. Uh, hip, railgun cannon parts. Um, I would say there's going to be two of this runner, or at least two of most of it because uh, the cannons are essentially the same and these parts uh, fit together. Uh, this would be the rear part, the middle part, and the front. Uh, you got kind of a vent piece here, a hand grip, which I never saw used in the series, so I've always left them stowed. Um, yeah, our collar, uh, chest vents, um, pieces for the... Oh, the, uh, the part for the face. Uh, the central vent, the inverted V-shaped chevron vents on the on the faceplate, are flanked by these kind of gray panels, um, which uh, yeah, nice to see they're on a separate piece. Uh, another identical pair of runners, uh, thigh parts, uh, hip, or sorry, uh, calf parts, uh, hips, front and rear uh, upper leg armor plates, ankle guard. I would guess these would be the plates that fit over the sides of the ankles, the joints. Uh, rear leg armor panel, I would say. Possibly a jointed kneecap. Uh, beam saber hilt. Very fancy. Uh, a lot more elaborate than I expected. Generally speaking, beam saber hilts are just, you know, very smooth, usually having not more than uh, a little notch. This one has a little notch, but um, there's a lot of neat detailing on here and some ribbing going around. And it looks like it will, you will be able to connect two together to form a, uh, a double-bladed beam saber uh, without having to use an intermediate part. So they will, should be able to just clip together. And uh, it's a single piece with a drilled-out uh, emitter. Uh, top of the foot and front of the leg. Uh, most of the chest armor parts. Um, not quite black, more of a really, really dark navy blue. Got the uh, central armor plate for the shield, uh, above and below the viewport. You got the cockpit hatch, uh, flanking uh, armor panels on the chest, the rear backpack, or the, the, the back plate, the backpack armor parts. Uh, I believe this would be the top of the backpack, which is etched uh, Z a zaft. Uh, which was the uh, one of the factions in the series, ZGMF X10A, uh, which is the model number. Um, these would be parts for the wings. Um, nicely, uh, nicely assembled on the runner. Um, I like the way they do this, so that uh, it's a single piece. You don't have to like sandwich two pieces together. Uh, and end up with a seam along the leading edge, and there's a gap along the back, so you can insert the uh, other pieces into the wing to uh, close it up. Speaking of wings, uh, some of the largest wing parts, uh, I believe these would be the parts that actually would fit into those uh, slots on those pieces that we just looked at. Um, wing joints, this would be the Cle uh, the blue plate that fits on the rifle. So yeah, like I said, really glad they did it that way. Uh, I was really, uh, I was always really disappointed. I did like, I, I think I did three of the original uh, Freedom, at least two. I was always disappointed when it came to this part that I would have to paint it. And the uh, armor plate for the uh, midsection, which single piece just slots into the main body and then probably gets pinned in by the uh, upper body armor so it's a single seamless piece of armor more wing parts and again two identical runners um, smaller shorter wings uh, detail plates feet parts um, not much else to say I've uh, got some interesting etching on the wings here, kind of uh, arrow-shaped uh, etching details on here. Um, 
yeah, not much else to say. Looks like the feet uh, will have uh, some nice detail. Uh, probably have some really good articulation to them. Beam saber blades. What is there to say? They're beam saber blades, standard teardrop shape. The previous Freedom had the kind of uh, katana shaped curved blades, if I remember correctly. I always preferred those over these. Never been a fan. Um, more of the uh, the hip rail guns. This is pretty much the same runner as we already looked at, except missing a chunk over here. And again, much like uh, we already looked at, we got those wing parts. I believe this is part of a kneecap armor right here. Uh, probably part of the shoulder cannons. Uh, some sort of vent piece and a barrel piece. And one last pair of runners, again, identical. Uh, leg frames uh, for the lower legs, uh, detail up parts for the uh, calves, upper legs, hip joints, which I've actually heard, these are incredibly fragile. The way, the way these attach to the main body are incredibly fragile. Uh, so when I build this, I will uh, confirm or deny, but um, one of my favorite Gundam model kit websites, uh, downlong.net, uh, on his review, I don't know if it's this part or maybe this part or another similar one, but yeah, a, a peg like this snapped off. Um, I'll link to uh, his fo uh, photo review of it, and uh, you can see for yourself. But um, bottom of the feet, uh, knee plates, um, more parts for the wings, a lot of joint parts. Uh, yeah, just a lot of joints here and there. Um, all ABS, incidentally. All of this is uh, molded in ABS. Uh, this, this runner and all the other frame parts. There are no poly caps in this set. Um, so that's always interesting. And uh, then we got our markings. Uh, got our uh, foil-backed uh, stickers for the eyes and various sensors. Uh, dry transfers, which one day I'll do a video about how to apply these, because they are kind of interesting. And finally, um, your uh, transparent-backed uh, stickers. Um, don't like these. Never liked adhesive stickers. Um, water slide uh, decals or dry transfers or anything but these. They're just awful. Uh, we got some documentation uh, in the box. This looks like it's a set of effect parts. Um, a pair of uh, beam blasts for the over-the-shoulder cannons, uh, railgun blasts for the hip cannons, and one for the beam rifle. Interesting. Not my bag, but interesting. Um, no idea what this says. Um, BandaiHobby.net Enquête. That's a French word meaning um, mystery, if I'm not mistaken. So there's probably some sort of... Uh, online game that you can play. You know, scan the uh, QR code and play some kind of weird game. And, uh... This is an odd thing. I didn't know Bandai was doing these. Apparently they're doing figure busts of uh, some of the Gundam pilots. Um, starting with uh, Kira and Athran Zala. Um, don't know what the scale is, don't know really anything about them. I would have to guess they would probably be about maybe five inches tall at the head, four or five inches, based on the uh, scale relative to the, the model kits. This is odd. Oh, 100 millimeters, so about four inches. Yeah, weird. Okay. Not my bag, but okay. And last but not least, uh, we got our instruction booklet. Um, copy of the box art. Got some bio info, historical info, starting with uh, the uh, the GAT series. Um, the uh, Duel, Buster, Blitz, and Aegis, which were captured by Zaft at the beginning of the series and reverse engineered to develop this mobile suit. Um, got some info, just some 
Details about assembly for anyone who's never built a Gundam kit before. You got your parts callouts. Uh, assembly begins with the torso and then onto the head, arms, waist, uh, then legs. You got your center section, which I always love when they Photoshop in these uh, really awesome. Um, uh, battle scenes. So you got the uh, freedom launching from the archangel, and the freedom uh, dueling the uh, the impulse. Uh, in as I said, probably the only good scene in all of Gundam Seed Destiny. Uh, the rest the rest of the series can just go to hell. But I could rewatch this fight over and over again. Um, and then uh, yeah, you got your detail about. Uh, uh, the mechanism, the uh, history of the the mecha, and your pilots, detail, Kira, Atherin, and uh, Lacus Klein. Uh, construction continues with the backpack unit and the uh, railgun hip cannons. Um, and then uh, beam rifle, shield, etc. And then uh, the base and uh, shows how you can attach that plug into a... Uh, Action base, and it actually the that's interesting. The uh, base does not actually connect to the model itself; it attaches to a little cradle. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, not sure why they would do it that way, but hey, whatever. Uh, and then yeah, shows off how to uh, deploy the weapons, and uh, then finally your uh, marking guide, and a last beauty shot. So. Figure bust model kits. Okay. I'm not into busts, but I guess somebody is. Um, anyway, um, it's a good looking kit. Uh, I don't know if, it, if the Freedom really needed a version 2.0. The original kit was pretty good, aside from, you know, the minor complaint of the uh, that blue plate on the beam rifle armor um, having to be painted. I don't know if the technology's really come far enough that uh, that that suit that that kit really needed to be redone. Um, I'm excited to crack into it. Um, I'm curious to see just how different the assembly is. It looks very different, but you know, realistically, you know, in 12 years or 10 years or however long it's been, yeah, I don't know if it really was necessary. Um, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's it's out there. I bought it, and I'm going to build it, and I'm curious to compare it to my old one. Because uh, I think I still have an old one kicking around someplace. Probably in a box somewhere buried in the back of the garage. Um, but in terms of, you know, taking it on its own merits, you know, uh, ignoring the fact that it's a version 2.0, it looks fantastic. Um, Engineering-wise, it looks great. Uh, the detail on the wings, uh, they open in new ways, uh, in different ways than the old kit did. Uh, I think the shoulder cannons, um, they open up, in, they have vents that open up in different ways than the original kit did. Um, the beam saber hilts look, oh, look fantastic. Um, like all those, the ribbing details, and like the, the hilts themselves just look beefy. Like the old kit, um, they were pretty small, so these new ones look being have, they look like they have some chunk to them. Um, and overall, the assembly looks really interesting. Uh, you know, this will be one of my first Master Grade kits in a while. Um, I think the last one I did was probably over a year ago. Um, trying to think of what it might have been. Uh, probably the Hayakushiki version 2.0, which now that is a kit that needed a version 2.0. Um, because that one was released originally in about 2000, and um, it did not hold up uh, with all the other version 2.0 um, Zeta Gundam stuff. Because I had mine on display with, you know, my my V2 uh, Zeta and uh, Mark II and the Nemo and all of the other Zeta kits. And yeah, there's just there's no comparison. Like that that thing was just chunky and lacking in detail and lacking in articulation. The only thing it really had going for it was the gold chrome, which didn't even look very good. But we're not here to talk about the Haikushiki. We're here to talk about the Freedom. Um, I'm eager to build it. 
It's one of my favorite designs. Um, I wish it had a better base. Not much else I can say. It looks cool. Uh, I'm eager to bust into it and uh, and see what uh, what it looks like. Um, in the meantime, if you want to have a look at the assembled model, uh, do check out Dowlong.net's uh, photo review. Um, it's all in Korean, unfortunately, but his photos are generally... Uh, his, his photos are great. Um, and uh, I, I love going there whenever a new master grade or a new high grade kit or a real grade kit or whatever comes out. Just to, just to have a look at the breakdown of it. Uh, the, uh, the person who runs that site will always take like really great pictures of the assembly process and the uh, complete and completed kit in like dozens of poses like dozens and dozens of pictures for every every review so I'll link down below to uh, to that and you can take a look um, next up uh, we're gonna take a look tomorrow at um, something from my childhood um, yeah, it's a reissue of an old kit that uh, I had back in 1989, when I was just a wee little nine-year-old. Um, yeah, I just aged myself. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say what it was, but uh, if you recognize this, you might have an idea what I'm talking about. So stay tuned for that, and um, thanks everyone out there for watching. Happy modeling.